Good morning. So, how are you? I happen to be back now in New York and uh, had a very interesting trip to the whole California area, uh, Los Angeles, Beverly Hills, Hollywood. A wonderful conference uh, discussing the nature of our world today, the state of our world and what we can do to collectively help create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier and joyful world. And it was very good. Rishikesh Dixit. Nice to see you here again. Okay, so today's question uh, is uh, from uh, somebody who's obviously been uh, uh, participating in these conversations for a long time and uh, she has a very important question uh, and it has to do with uh, <clears throat> supernormal abilities or dormant potentials or superpowers or siddhis, what Ever you want to call it, but she begins her question with a preamble and she says, I, w I was wondering if the title of this website, Discovering Your Cosmic Self, is because the aim is to have cosmic consciousness stage, as your other books often mention it, the fifth level of consciousness. Why not title it instead, Discover Your Divine Self? or discover your unity self, stage seven and stage six before that. Or maybe I'm mistaken. No, you're not mistaken. I think um, um, we could call it any of those because they, all those states uh, in a way are entangled. So let's not be too literal about them. Um, but then she goes on to the reader who's MM. So I don't know if it's a he or she, but M.M. Uh, goes on to say, then why don't you talk about the divine consciousness state more, or miracles, or stage six uh, in how to know God? He says, um, uh, faith can cure uh, diseases. Do people in stage seven automatically have so-called siddhis? Siddhis is the Sanskrit word for um, paranormal or supernormal potentials. She says, um, um, she's quoting from all my books and I don't want to go over all those books, but basically uh, she says, um, why don't we see more supernormal powers if we all have them? So. Once again, uh, the questions are coming from readers of this and other books. The book is You Are the Universe, Discovering Your Cosmic Self and Why It Matters. And um, we post the answers here on discoveringyourcosmicself.com. They're also, of course, right now on Facebook Live. And I support you in your quest to expand awareness and ultimately understand who you are, who we all are and the nature of the universe. So let's get straight to the question of Siddhis or supernormal powers. So the word Siddhi is a Sanskrit word and uh, if you read the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali you will see there's a special chapter on Siddhis uh, and uh, basically it gives instructions on uh, how to acquire those siddhis. Actually, we teach some of these in our course, Seduction of Spirit, which is a week-long course in advanced meditation, and also a week-long course in um, uh, understanding the nature of these so-called super normal powers or siddhis as they're called. So Patanjali says we acquire these super normal powers or we awaken these dormant potentials inherent in all of our consciousness as we learn to combine what he calls uh, 
ध्यान धारणा समाधि धारणा ध्यान समाधि धारणा इज फोकस्ड अवेयरनेस विद अटेंशन एंड इंटेंशन ध्यान इज मेडिटेशन एंड समाधि इज ट्रांसेंडेंस सो व्हेन यू कंबाइन दीज थ्री थिंग्स धारणा ध्यान समाधि देन डोरमेंट पोटेंशियल्स ओपन अप इन कॉन्शियसनेस giving you the experience of a siddhi or supernormal power so uh let's explain this and try to understand this you know even as i've written all the books that um, mm talks about uh, unconditional life how to know god obviously this has been a journey for all of us together and uh, i have shared my journey over the years uh, with you with some of you for now 35 years so it's not going to be easy to summarize that whole journey right now here in a few minutes but let me share with you where we are at the moment in the understanding of nature of reality in the understanding of the nature of reality and how it pertains to what people call supernormal powers i'd like to actually start off with you um doing an experiment with me right now so um have soft eyes which means don't focus on anything just have your eyes open with no focus we'll do some mental exercises so in your mind <clears throat> imagine that you're listening to your favorite song just in your mind okay so listen to i'm right now imagining that i'm listening to john lennon singing imagine okay so now you're ex- having an experience listening to a song even though there's no noise or sound in your head what did you do you converted yourself as awareness into that experience listening to that song okay now imagine in your awareness again with soft eyes that uh, you're uh, touching the rough bark of a tree just have that experience and you've converted yourself as awareness you've modified awareness into that experience the the texture of the rough bark of a tree and now keeping your eyes open again in your consciousness imagine the flight of an eagle and you can see it in the sky as it flies high in the sky leaving no trail into the clouds across the rainbow so as awareness you modified yourself into that experience of form and color and rainbow and the flight of the eagle okay now um, keep your eyes open soft eyes and imagine that you're tasting a uh, chocolate ice cream and as awareness now you've modified yourself awareness into the taste of chocolate ice cream and finally imagine right now with um, your eyes open that you're smelling the fragrance of lavender or rose or spearmint or peppermint have that experience and you can fo- convert it awareness into the subtle experience of smell no okay, case so in all these instances i showed you how awareness modifies itself into an experience but in this case a subtle experience in what we call the subtle body but we do the same thing all the time when um, we perceive something in what we call the physical world so when i lift my coffee cup and taste it 
what I've done is me as awareness have modified myself into the experience of the coffee cup as this shape, as this color, as this texture, as this form, as this taste and as the body-mind experiencing that. So me as awareness knows itself as the coffee cup, the taste of the coffee and the perceiver of that experience and the one who knows that experience. In other words, awareness constantly knows itself as both the objects of experience and the knower of experience. All the time, the subject and the object emerge from awareness by aware awareness modifying itself. Now, some of these experiences we call physical, the experience of the physical world, but in reality that coffee cup and its taste and its shape and its color is a modified form of the self as is the perceiver, the body-mind that is saying, I'm looking at that. Okay, but the real I is not that, not that, it's transcendent, it's awareness, formless, um, experiencing itself as this and this. Now why isn't that super normal? Why isn't every expression super normal? Why isn't seeing super normal? There's no real explanation for how consciousness modifies itself as seeing or hearing or touching or tasting or feeling or thinking about it. Because, you know, all these are modifications of consciousness. Why is that not super normal? And that is because we are so used to it that we take it as normal, you know. But in fact, as I've said many times before, no experience, no experience, whatever, whether it's the experience of this and the one who is looking at this, or actually the awareness um, that is modifying itself into this and this, into the experience of this and this, no experience can be actually taken as real. Why? Because no experience lasts longer than even a microsecond. It is a quick arising and subsiding. Every act of perception, every thought, every feeling, every interpretation, every image, every experience that you have is a very quick arising and subsiding of experience in awareness. The only constant is the awareness itself. Okay? The only constant is awareness itself. The rest is evanescent, ephemeral. Okay? So no experience can be reality. Why does it appear so real? Why does right now I'm sitting in this room and looking at all these objects and they seem to not be arising and subsiding. They seem to be there. You know, look at the Ganesh statue and look at the uh, Lakshmi statue there, they seem to be um, there. They don't seem to be arising and subsiding. And the reason is that, you know, the same experience or almost the same experience repeats itself so fast that it seems to be continuous, that uh, the discontinuity is not noted. But in every act of perception, there's a new perceiver and a new perceived. Of course, when I look at these objects, they don't seem new, but actually the experience in every moment, or even every less than a moment, is um, brand new. That's why Shiva says, if you want to create a new world, you have to step out of the river of conditioning and memory and see the world for the first time, and then there's a new world. So what's a city? A Siddhi is the awakening of dormant potentials when through attention and intention you transform your self as awareness 
into something that breaks out of the habitual ways of perceiving and conceiving and interpreting and thinking and feeling. But a Siddhi is no more real than any other experience. A Siddhi is no more real and supernormal power, so called, is no more real than any other experience. It's just the flashing in and the flashing out of your own self. The only constant is you as being. So then uh, why do we not see more of these Siddhis? because our so-called individual consciousness is also a result of the hypnosis of collective conditioning and it's very difficult to break out of that. If you break out of that, then you're a rare person. You're either a sage or a genius or a psychotic. There's a thin line between sages, psychotics and geniuses. We kind of uh, tread the razor's edge because on one side is everyday reality and on the other side is extraordinary reality. But actually neither of these are reality. The only reality is the consciousness which is modifying itself in every moment into experience. The experience of a sparrow, the experience of an alligator, the experience of a cro crocodile, the experience of an eagle, the experience of a snake, the experience of an insect. Imagine the innumerable, innumerable ways that um, awareness modifies itself into experiences that um, we objectify, and especially if you're a scientist, we objectify those experiences as the objects of the universe, and then we actually can do measurements and validation of the experience and uh, we can call it reality but none of it is reality. There's waking dream and there's, um, there's the dream that you have at sleep and both are modifications of consciousness, the on-off of consciousness, the excitations of consciousness, the modulations of consciousness the modified forms of consciousness. So, body, mind, universe, as I've said many times before, are human constructs to explain these experiences. But I've already said no experience is real. So, back in a moment. So, Barris asks, paranormal or supernormal? And it's the same thing. Paranormal, supernormal, normal, they're all the same thing. Okay, what we call paranormal, supernormal are dormant, non-local potentials. So, I want to go a little deeper. If you want to have these experiences, what should you do? First is question your everyday reality because what we call everyday reality is um, a social construct, a human construct, and collective intersubjective experience. And some of these are basically things that we don't have control over. The regularities of experience that we call natural laws. Okay. Um, you can't stop the sun from arising tomorrow because the earth is going to spin on its axis and give you that experience. But the earth spinning on its own axis is a collective intersubjective experience and occurs with the regularity. Why? Well, that's the way it is. You know, consciousness has certain regularities of experience. But, of course, even those regularities, even though they are ingrained in our biological organism, they are perceived differently by different species. There's no such thing as a, an experience that is more valid than the other. In other words, there's no privileged position for any experience. 
the experience of a sage, the experience of a psychotic, the experience of a genius, or the experience that you and I are having. But we were going to, how do we change experience? Well, question everyday reality. Replace the word object with the word experience. Understand that the body-mind is not the container of experience, but an experience itself. The body-mind is not the container of awareness. The body-mind is an experience in, in awareness. So shift your allegiance from the body-mind to the awareness in which the experience of the body-mind is happening, along with the experience of everything else that is happening around the body-mind. It's all coming from you, deeper self. So shift your allegiance from the body-mind as the container of experience to, in fact, the experience in awareness. The body-mind not as a container of awareness, but an experience in awareness. So I've given you two things. Question everyday reality. Don't call it the objects of the objects of the world, even your own body. Replace it by the experience in consciousness. And second is shift your allegiance from the body mind to the awareness in which the body mind and everything else is also happening simultaneously. And from that level of being, which is transcendent and beyond subject-object split, evoke an attention, evoke an intention and have your attention on that which you've evoked. So I just said, think of a rainbow and boom, there's the experience of a rainbow. Now hold on to that rainbow and transcend. Okay, and gradually you will expand your imagination and imagination is all reality. Even everyday realities is imagined reality. We imagine, we by we I mean awareness, imagines itself into the subject object of experience. But that awareness is not personal. Okay, that awareness is um, universal, formless dimensionless, experiencing itself in these multi-dimensional ways. So we also know people that uh, we call synesthetes. They hear a color or they taste, um, um, they taste um, uh, music or they hear music when they see a form. In other words, they can substitute one sensation to another. Of course, a neuroscientist would say because there are correlates in the brain uh, for this, but the brain itself is an experience. The correlates themselves are an experience. All there is is experience, and experience is a modification of self. The more you understand that, the more you'll break out of the hypnosis of conditioning. Somebody just said you are but a thought. Well, thought, which is the interpretation of experience, feeling, perception, imagination, they all go together. You change uh, your, the way you think, you will change what you perceive. You change what you perceive, you will change how you interpret that. You change how you feel about that. So, feeling, thought, sensation, images, sense perceptions are all modifications of the self. There is only the self. There is only awareness. So here's another tip. For practical purposes you can call this a book. All the while knowing that it is a symbolic representation of um, yourself. It's a symbolic uh, representation of yourself and upon that is a construct called a book. But the book and the body are both constructs. 
or awareness modifying itself. So, every act of perception is a creation. In every act of perception, you create the world. And that is amazing, isn't it? That is amazing that why don't we call every act of perception a siddhi, a supernormal activity, because it is. Nobody knows. No scientist can give you an explanation for experience, whether it's mental, perceptual, etc. They can give you the biological correlates, but many times they don't realize that even the biological correlates are experiences, modified forms of consciousness. They are constructs. The biology itself is a construct. Useful construct. Science is a very useful uh, way of uh, manipulating experience by giving them names and descriptions and measurements. Have I answered your question? I'm not sure, but I think we're on the way. If you come to the Seduction of Spirit course, which is a week-long meditation course, uh, you can go, um, you know, you can go to the Chopra website, chopra.com, and you can uh, um, you can actually uh, come to this week-long experience which will give you a deeper understanding of how to unfold dormant potentials that we all have. All have. But the first thing we also have to do is get rid of the words normal, paranormal, supernormal because everything is most extraordinary and everything, everything is inexplicable. Existence and awareness of existence are inexplicable. Just because we can describe the correlates and give names and descriptions to this <clears throat> doesn't uh, <clears throat> mean that that explains everything. Explanation is not the same thing as description. In fact, the more you understand, the more you realize that there's no explanation for anything. Somebody once told me, explanation is a silly word, it should be taken away from all languages. So even rational thought is inexplicable when you don't know <clears throat> the origin of thought. How does consciousness modify itself into thought and then, you know, when we have consistency and agreement on, on a certain experience and also for the explanation of that experience, we call it rationality. And many people pride themselves over rationality when in fact um, rationality is just um, a collective agreement on experience and the interpretation of experience. And therefore I won't go back to what I said. There's no privileged position that any experience overhold, um, uh, that any experience holds over other experiences. So as Virva Susanna Varis says, we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing, she says. That's uh, very good. Uh, it's true. But ask yourself, what is it, as Rupert Spira does in the first sentence of his new book, ask yourself, what it is, what is it that knows your experience? What is it that knows your experience? And by experience, all experience, the experience of mind, body, universe. What is it that knows itself as that experience and as the knower of the experience? Knower and known go together. Okay, now of course in many traditions there are all these uh, gods and goddesses um, which are symbols of these expanded states of consciousness. So when you, in the, in the Eastern wisdom tradition, sometimes the goddess Lakshmi is the embodiment of abundance consciousness. 
or the goddess Saraswati, the embodiment of the desire to know or have knowledge or wisdom. Uh, Ganesh is the remover of obstacles. But these are not external gods and goddesses. These are symbols of expanded states of consciousness and when we when we incarnate those states of consciousness in our body mind then we become capable of those abilities all the while remembering that awareness itself is not a state it what gives rise to states including the states i mentioned in my previous books as cosmic consciousness God consciousness and Brahman or unity consciousness. So that's it for today. I've gone on too long and uh, we'll continue this conversation. I thank you all for sharing these with each other, the sharing these conversations with each other, sharing them with me, sending me all this wonderful love and all the beautiful sentiments. The more we experience our inseparability, the more we'll be capable of changing the hypnosis of collective conditioning that we call normal reality. But it is part of our dreamscape. And right now, the collective dreamscape is almost like a nightmare. So we need to upgrade the illusion, as I've said before. Thank you. See you tomorrow.